coming from Valdez, North Carolina, where I live now, and getting ready to go up the mountain to where I was raised, which is a place called Little Switzerland. So the place I'm headed is up there in those clouds. Uh, I told some friends this week that I was going to go to a decoration up in the mountains, an old time decoration. And I, I was surprised how down in the foothills even, uh, people don't know what that is, what a decoration is. And so I'm going to do a little sort of documentary, I guess, about a decoration. So we're headed into the heart of Appalachia, Little Switzerland. I'm going to go to the, the Collis Cemetery is where we're headed. We're still, of course, down in the bottom land where we've not started to climb the mountain yet. And this mountain, climbing this mountain is really amazing. You go, uh, those are the hills up there where we're going to Little Switzerland. You climb pretty high, I'm guessing probably close to a thousand feet out of this valley. Uh, eight, nine hundred feet anyway, I would think. Your ears pop, you get up there, you get over three thousand feet elevation. I do not know where the tradition of a decoration started. It's sort of a reunion, a remembrance. It's not like Memorial Day though, where you remember a certain select group of people or veterans or anything like that, although that is involved. It's just a memorial time where you go and you, um, you decorate the cemetery. You put you know, fresh flowers on all the graves. You make sure they're all looking really nice and people stand around and talk, remember, I guess, reunite. Um, every year I'm here, people say that fewer and fewer folks show up. So is the decoration tradition going away? I don't know. But we're going to find out. We're going to see how many people show up tomorrow. This road used to be in much worse shape than it is now. It's actually two lane most of the way up now. It used to be that if you got behind a, uh, a truck or something coming up here, it was just terrible get behind some big truck and you're going to go like three miles an hour up this mountain which is a pretty steep grade and already I'm starting to feel my ears pop as the pressure changes. So up there on that hill is Little Switzerland ahead of us. Moved away from here many years ago. I've lived in the Catawba Valley um, pretty much all through my late 20s and 30s and 40s and um, I miss the place. It's a place is hard to leave. It's hard to make a living up here and I, you know, I admire the people like my two brothers Tom and Tim who are able to make a living up here and stay. My mom and dad never moved away. Some people do really well and thrive. They can find a niche and all and they can uh, can survive the you know the bad economy. It's gorgeous though. This place up here to me is always seemed like a fairy tale land almost like the Shire in um, Lord of the Rings. I mean it's that kind of beauty. It's that kind of magical sort of place. The Appalachian Highlands. So I'm going to interview some folks. I'm going to ask them about decorations. I'm going to get their remembrances. I'm going to get their emotion because it is an emotional time. I think I'm going to take the parkway. Uh, can go back that way to Little Switzerland, but I'd rather go up the parkway, I believe. So we're going to do that. There's the Mineral Museum. So we're at 2,819 feet, it says here, crest of the Blue Ridge Gillespie Gap. And it says we're 57 miles from Asheville. So we're headed back over here toward the Emerald Village. This is Chestnut Grove Church Road.
you know, a guy named was it Frank Caulfield or whatever that started the Christmas trees. These are actually leftovers of some of the first Christmas trees grown in western North Carolina, or at least some of the last grown by Frank. Some of those uh, Fraser firs there, probably transplanted from uh, up on Roan Mountain, brought down here. Now here is my grandmother's home. <laughs> hey Beth. What are we doing? Are we, oh, we're not. I'm shooting some video. Oh. <laughs> hey everybody. I, this is my cousin Beth. Maybe you will edit out that part. This is going to be on you YouTube, perhaps. Or, would you mind being on YouTube? Not at all. <laughs> How you I'm doing? So glad to see you. This is uh, Beth, my. Younger cousin. Younger cousin. Slightly she is. younger. <laughs> Slightly younger. And this is my husband, Ben. Yes. So, what I thought I'd do is like make a little documentary about what a decoration is because the people down in the valley don't know. Yeah, that's they, significant. It, it, I mean, it's like so many Mountain people. Culture. They have I've no never clue. Heard that game here. You really? So, where are you from? Damascus, Virginia. Damascus, Virginia. Not that far away. So, you grew up, grew up in an Appalachian kind of environment. Yeah. Scott Irish background too with you? Yeah. Or? McCall. McCall, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're a primary clan. Mm -hmm. And so, out of Buchanan's. Yeah, okay, so where in the world did decoration come from? Was this something we came from? You said you never heard of it before. I'd never heard of it. You, until you married Beth. Right. Okay, as an outsider, what did you think of it? Did, did you think it's weird to have the decoration thing? I thought it was interesting. No, maybe not weird. I thought it was interesting. I, I, I thought that was a, a, uh, a cool custom to remember your uh, those who have gone on. Which most of us don't. Exactly. See, Ben's big into family history anyway. Yeah. So that's yeah. significant to him. So this is my granny's old house. And my Aunt Nancy uh, stays here and does it. Got some tables and stuff. This is the old tree I used to climb around on and play on. Hey, when I was a kid, still pretty much the same. Old hemlock tree. Very odd, the shape of it. Let me go see your grandma. <laughs> hey, Nancy. I can tell you've been cooking and stuff. Oh, I, I had can and beans. Can and beans? Uh -huh. Wow. Have you been up here for a while? or Just, just, just since yesterday. Just yesterday? Just yesterday. I can spoil it and it, I wish people could smell it. It smells like green beans. It smells well, awesome. sometimes when Aaron walks in, he says, this is how it's supposed to smell. Well, did you, did you grow them up here? Did you grow them down the no, valley and bring I, them up? I bummed them off of Dan. Oh, all right. Yes, I did. So this mm -hmm. is um, you know, Granny and Granddad's old house. That's my grandmother there with the, my Aunt Kay. That's, uh, is that Beth there it in is. that picture? So that's Tawny Taylor Glenn and my grandmother Nora. Ja Nora Jane? Nora Jane Glenn. And Beth, that's when we just met outside. And there's, of course, Granny up close. And you've done a lot of things to really make this whole house look nice. So the stove used to sit here, didn't it? Yeah. Well, Nancy, are you going to go to the decoration tomorrow? Uh, probably will not. The women typically, a lot the of them stay around. The women typically stay home and cook. So. Yeah. <laughs> but well, we look forward to everybody coming back. The, how long have decorations been going on up here? As long as I, as I can remember, which would be 65 years, and I'm sure that it was a good long while before that, and it's just a good mountain tradition, I guess, uh, doubles as a family reunion and a time to see friends that you haven't seen for a long, long time, uh, and, and pay respects to our ancestors. And we really always put a lot of pretty flowers and things out. Mm -hmm. I mean, like like growing up as a little girl, did, did Granny grow flowers particularly? Oh, she planted her gladiolus. She knew exactly when to plant gladiolus so they would be ready at decoration time. So gladiolus was a big deal. And on occasion, we would go down to a Miss Halp, I believe it was, on Gracie Creek and buy uh, gladiolus. We would take fresh flowers because at that time we didn't really have that many pretty there weren't silk flowers so and, and interesting enough that some people would actually make their flowers out of crepe paper and then dip it in candle wax and make do really make, make the, a permanent a semi-permanent arrangement so in other words would they actually take the crepe paper and, and put wax on the paper to keep mm -hmm. it from like you cut it you cut it in petals mm -hmm. and uh you had some sort of a a stick to, to hold it and you wrap the stick with green crepe paper. Then you cut petals and you started in the middle and kept adding and kept adding. Then you could stretch it a little bit and make the uh, petals. And then once you got a dozen or so done, at that point you melted some wax and dipped them down in it and let it cool. And the wax would be clear the and be pretty be, colored yeah, paper underneath it. would be it. pretty. So they actually, they were very pretty. 
but people just had to make do the best they could. And they would last a long time, I guess, because the, the, the wet is harsh up here. Yeah, and the wax would just, the water would just fall off of it, so they would last probably as long as silk flowers do now. So. now thanks for telling everybody where you live now. We live at Mount Holly. We've been down there for 33 years, I believe, now. And we went down there because of George's work. Yeah. Um, so that's we've lived there longer than we lived uh, at Grassy Creek. Uh, what where is, we lived beforehand. What does it mean to you to get to come back up to the Appalachian Mountains and just see things and be around it again? This is just my roots. This is truly home up here. Uh, I live down there, but this is home up here. Even no matter no matter how long you've been away? 33 years and this is still home. And it just feels like coming here, there's just this peace and presence here that we just all feel very comfortable. And the grandchildren, even though they didn't remember when Granny Nora and Granddaddy Tony was here, uh, but I guess they've heard us talk so much about it that they, they seem to appreciate it too. What is it that you think makes, makes it special up here in, in this part of, uh, of Western North Carolina? I think the sincerity of the people. There's a, there's a, to me, there's a greater depth in uh, relationships and friendships. Uh, I notice that more. Um, I think than maybe somewhere else. Uh, the weather is a good factor too to come up here where the air is so cool and it's quiet and peaceful. So put it all together, I love this place. What was it like growing up up here? Times were pretty hard back then uh, as far as uh, the economy and everything. Uh, most teenagers worked uh, either helping to clean houses, the boys would help out around little Switzerland uh, with odd jobs. Um, so times were hard and um, most people raised most of their vegetables. Granny Nora had a tremendous garden and so there was a lot of canning and freeze, uh, not freezing at that time. The freezer came later. But uh, there was a lot of hard work but there was still that good times and uh, it was not unusual after we would get the evening meal done uh, to go out and sit on the porch and visit with a neighbor. So that was something that you rarely see anymore. Can I come back and watch you work in the beans a little bit? Is that okay? We're through. Actually, Are you we're through? through. Well, show me. Uh, show me what you've done. Yeah, you're this welcome. This would be cool. Like I can say, people, people that don't know about up here will find this very interesting. Well, uh, th th this would be the stove uh, over here that Granny Nora used for years. Yep. Um, I it says Rome Eagle, Rome Eagle, or Alaska. Yep, Rome, so this Rome. is her old stove that she always uh, remembers right. to cook on. Right, and that's on. where she fried apple pies yep. and everything. And gravy and biscuits. And, and I remember she'd always put the bacon and fat back and stuff up here and let it just kind of sit up there until mm -hmm. you come get you a biscuit and, you and make you a bacon or a bacon biscuit or a fat back biscuit. Yeah, and so here's what we've been working on today canning green beans. Actually, we can 21 quarts all together. Wow. So that's been their days. And you can feed a family a, a good dinner on it with some green beans and cornbread and stuff like that, can't mm -hmm. you? Sure can. So uh, the table's a bit of a mess. That's but, all right. Uh, uh -huh. This is just how it goes before you get a nice dinner on the table. Now, as I recall, this is Granny's old GE refrigerator from when? Probably what is this? Fifties, sixty years this, old. It's sixty years old. So it I still can, works. Yeah, it still works, and I can't recall. Now, General it's Electric. Still General Electric, you can take. You can get a real good endorsement off of that. Gee, I have no idea what the model of this is, but I remember this refrigerator was where we always went to get the food, the milk and stuff like the yeah. chocolate milk. She always get me chocolate milk and stuff so I could dr drink it. Yeah, the old freezer's been there a long time too. The freezer's but been there a long. I don't actually use it now, uh, mm -hmm. thinking that uh, the power could be off or something, and that's not here. And of course, I remember, I remember this, the old washer. Yeah, let me move these bags on. Many times I remember watching her wash. I wish I had some video of how Granny used to wash in that old right. washer. And it's got yeah. a microwave on top of it now, but that's the old, uh, it has her have a ringer on the back of it, and it would wring the clothes out, but she would wash it inside mm -hmm. that. I don't know what model that is, Ring. And we would actually have to, to uh, carry the water outside to empty it in the tubs and everything, so. Porch. These are the old bedrooms and stuff. Just us. I remember I used to stay in here a good bit and I'd stay back in the other one that's back here behind the living room. And of course, Granny always slept in here and she had a bad back, so that was her bed and she had a board under the bed, I remember. Right. And sometimes I'd sleep over there in that bed when I was a little child. Yeah. And that's wild. That's wild to see the place. And you've kept it up good, Nancy. This was a bed. Is it still a bedroom back here? Yep, still a bedroom there. Yeah, I used to. Uh, Sleep in here. I remember a lot of times. One year it was so cold, 
And every morning you'd wake up and there'd be this, the wind would be totally frosted over there. You'd look out, you couldn't even see because of the frost. Oh, yeah. And you're right beside the stove. You used to sit right here, so you'd mm -hmm. think it would stay warm, but it would get so cold. You stand up real close to the stove. Yeah, yeah. And she'd get up real early yep. and get the fire going. Five o'clock, she'd be up working oh, yeah. the fire. Mm -hmm. And coal, a lot of times it was coal and, uh, yeah. and uh, sometimes wood. Remember, Granny Edda stayed back here a whole lot for right. a long time. That was our yeah. great grandmother, Edda Mace. There's another bedroom back. I don't know about snooping around, but it's kind of cool for me to be able to see. Uh, oh, wow, check it out. Yeah, remember this used to be a bed that went the other way. And this was kind of the mess room, she called it. She had the uh, messes back in a here. Lot of, uh, supplies. <laughs> quilting she supplies. Did a lot, a lot of quilting. quilting. Yeah. yeah. And this is the old shovel we came across. Wow, that's that the one she used to shovel the, the ashes out ashes of the out. stove. So yeah. I've got to take that and put it up. But, uh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of memories here.